Hey, Vinyl Community, it's David Michael. I'm back. Uh, I'm back from Europe. Uh, this is the morning after I got back. I got back at about 5.30 this morning, and I had a few hours sleep, and now I'm kind of... Uh, I have to work tonight, so I'm going to piece these videos together as much as I can. But what you're going to see now... I'm going to be really quick here. Um, this is kind of... What you're seeing now is the intro to an intro. I recorded an intro in London that I forgot that I recorded. And I decided to keep it in because you're going to see me horribly ill with food poisoning. I was in London for four days, traveled around Europe, and then came back to London for five days. So, um, so the, the first four days in London, I was horribly ill with food poisoning. So after that, what you're going to see is uh, some small clips of me shopping around London for vinyl. And then uh, stay tuned to the end where I'll show you what I did get. And uh, what I decided to do uh, by consensus from a lot of people is uh, do shorter videos. Um, probably per city is what I'll do. So uh, enjoy this intro, enjoy little clips of me shopping around London, and uh, we'll cut back after that and you'll see the vinyl I did get. Uh, just in London, there's many more cities to come. So uh, enjoy this first part and then I'll see you at the end um, with the records I did get. Hey, Vinyl Community, it's David Michael. Um, this is day two in London and I'm filming this from uh, our Airbnb uh, room in London. Um, this is one of those Airbnb places that you question why you booked. We didn't know any different. Uh, it, looked, it looked different in the ad, I think, but we were desperate for a place as our original place fell through. So um, for the price, this will do. Um, we're going to come, we're leaving London tomorrow to Prague and then we have a few other places to go. And then we're back in London in about a week and a half for four days. Um, so basically what happened was I, we landed in London yesterday and our flight was delayed leaving Canada due to um, there was a medical emergency by some passenger. We didn't we couldn't see what was going on. Um, but then they had to fish their luggage out of the out of the plane. So we were delayed an hour. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then they announced on the flight due to uh, severe turbulence that our, they added another hour onto our flight. So, yeah, it was just long. And then I landed in London and I went to, um, there's a department store you, you all might be familiar with, Marks and Spencers, Mark and Spencers, Marks and Spencers. And, um, I had a takeaway sandwich and about an hour later I got was getting violently ill and I w was stricken or am stricken with food poisoning and just when I think I'm over it today so yeah I mean yesterday was a write-off um, we went and met up with my daughter and I went to the 100 Club in London famous punk venue, um, actually it's a jazz venue, but it's famous for uh, hosting the Sex Pistols and a lot of other landmark punk gigs. That was really cool to see. Um, but it took the uh, the strength of everything I had in me to kind of keep it together because it, uh, it was more about seeing my daughter and I didn't want to wreck that. So we went out and my wife and my daughter had dinner and I kind of watched them. And uh, so yeah, yesterday was really pretty much a write-off. It was a uh, trying to scope up all the scope out where all the bathrooms are <laughs> wherever we were so today was the first real day that I got to go out record shopping and uh, the food poisoning had kind of subsided slightly and then it made a huge comeback yeah so actually right now as I film this my wife has gone out to um, a Tesco's down the street to see if she can get me some medicine so it's been a rough start, but having said that, today was uh, a really good vinyl shopping day. Um, as you'll see, um, this is kind of going to be a precursor to what you're going to see coming up. Um, I kind of filmed little parts of my record shopping around London. And um, all the finds I get, I'll save for a future video. Um, but uh, as I found out, uh, the best parts of London for vinyl shopping is um, all the discount bins. Uh, I, I ran into a lot of street uh, street vendors who had you know four uh, three for three for a tenner, lots of bins of four and five pound records, um, 
anything you saw in any record store you see coming up but um that was kind of regular priced you know kind of premium used vinyl once he did the conversion into canadian dollars it, it's well and above more than you would pay in my country and i didn't really see anything that was um really spectacular to be honest with you i mean there's the odd thing in here and there but once you like I said you do the, you do the price conversion um it, it's much more worth your while to go after the kind of uh, the cheaper stuff that you just don't see back home. And I, I sure got a lot of that stuff. So um, you'll see this all coming up. And then what you're going to see here is kind of uh, my day in London record shopping at all the record stores. And uh, like I said, I, I, I was very happy with what I found. So um, this is London, and then I'm off to Prague tomorrow. And then Berlin. And I don't know, wherever else. So it's getting kind of late, and it's been a very trying day and a half, um, being quite ill. Um, but I would expect Berlin will be um, my next uh, big hauls of, of vinyl. Maybe not, but if it ends here, I'm pretty happy with what I got today. So anyways, uh, enjoy the rest of the video, and we will see you for future video updates. Take care, everyone. Hey Val community, it's David Michael. I'm just uh, in London. It's kind of obvious here. I'm on something called Brick Lane. I hope you all can hear me amongst all this commotion here. My wife and daughter have decided to uh, go for coffee and leave me be. So there's a vinyl uh, market just down here and then just down the street apparently to the left is uh, Rough Trade East. Uh, it's a Sunday. It's uh, a little bit crazy if you're uh, used to being in Canada. So I'm going to head down to uh, this vintage market, vinyl market, supposedly called the biggest vinyl sale in London. And then I'm going to head down to Rough Trade East and see what they have to offer. No, I'm not in the queue for
so far it's been a very lovely day in London and in fact I've had a lot more luck in street vendors actually than record stores um, for 80s and 90s alternative kind of stuff I've been doing pretty well today we're heading down to Sister Ray Records on Shoreditch High Street and I think this is it here and there might be another record store across the street there we go Sister Ray let's go ahead and have a look Sister Ray was pretty cool, heading down to what they recommended was Flashback Records, and here I am here. So we're going to go and have a look. So I just came out of Flashback Records. Feels a bit odd filming myself going down the street, but that seems to be what a lot of YouTubers do, isn't it? I'm going to go like that. Ah. Um, flashback was kind of cool. Um, a lot of things were organized. A lot of things in UK are kind of micro-organized, which makes it a bit hard to look around. Because you never know what that record is you're looking for. Is it uh, UK 70s folk? Is it uh, US psych? Um, with the members of the band born before 1950? I don't know. It's got... Uh, I mean, that's nitpicking, isn't it? But. Apart from that, uh, Flashback was good. You got to have some time on your hands. Because uh, apart from their, I guess, premium records, as you might call it, uh, they had a lot of discount records. But they're all kind of thrown together, so you got to have time on your hands. Um, which seems to be the, uh, the common thing in the UK, I'm finding. Um, apart from that, I think the best records I've seen today are probably street vendors. Um, a lot of... Records I just never would even thought I would ever find. Kind of, you know, 90s, 80s, uh, uh, indie stuff, I guess. Some new wave stuff I found for uh, really cheap. So uh, I'm just off to find my wife and family. And I'll probably head off for dinner. So uh, I'm going to guess that's going to end my Sunday shopping trip. But big old bag of records to show you all when I get back to Canada. And uh, apart from that... Here we go. Today we hit uh, Flashback. We hit Sister Ray. We hit uh, we hit um, Rough Trade uh, East, and uh, a few street vendors. And like I said, the street vendors by far just absolute gold. So uh, I'm gonna sign off now, and we'll t we'll catch up to you. Hey, Vinyl Community, we're back. Um, I hope that second intro kind of explained, I guess, my thought process uh, or my thoughts of vinyl shopping in London. Um, what I, uh, the end, uh, the end of that video from Camden Market, that was on my second trip through, um, through London. And I didn't film in every store I went into because some stores, uh, just seemed like they couldn't be bothered. They didn't want me filming, which is fine. It's fair enough. And, um, and not, not everything had something I wanted, obviously. So like I said, that second intro when I was kind of ill, kind of, I think I, uh, I had aptly explained, uh, my, uh, my thoughts about what I was finding in London anyways, but I found some good stuff. So anyways, cheers everyone. I'm going to try to power through this as to not make this video too, too long. I'll digress by saying you all know how my videos go. We're going to start with a new vinyl. The only new vinyl I bought on my trip, I believe. And um, I'll try to keep these stories to a minimum. So anyways, um, there's a grocery store in London or in England called Sainsbury's. And they release... Um, exclusive vinyl to their stores only and you can't order them online you have to go in the store and buy them so a couple weeks ago they had released uh, a, a new series of records that, um, there were Sainsbury exclusives only 
and um, they had sold out. This title I'm holding right here had sold out right away. And then I got a tip on a on a forum from this band, um, a Facebook fan page or something that um, there was one day uh, that the stores were going to get replenished with with uh, whatever leftover stock. These were limited of a thousand uh, pieces. And finding a Sainsbury in London that carried vinyl was incredibly, incredibly difficult. I guess the, most of the stores are in outlying areas of London, or of England, sorry. But I found one totally by accident after going to many, many, doing a ton of walking and having people look at me sideways like, that, no, we don't carry vinyl. We don't know what you're talking about. I found one uh, totally by accident in Camden, in Camden Town, I guess it's called. And I went in, my wife spotted the vinyl. My heart started beating. I saw their vinyl rack. There was a tag for it. No records. Um, they had sold whatever remaining stock they had. I said, oh, I'm from Canada. Da, 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 da. They went in the back and they found one copy left. Yes. So uh, I, I, I was thrilled beyond belief because I got a Sainsbury only exclusive silver vinyl of T-Rex the Slider. Um, I have many, many variants of this album. You all know I'm a T-Rex fanatic. In fact, while I was in London, I stayed in, a, in an area called Stoke Newington, uh, totally by accident. And uh, Mark Boland's childhood home was about two blocks from where I was staying, uh, the second time around. The first time, that hole in the ground that I was staying in, I don't think anything was near that piece of shit. The second time around, we had a beautiful Air, Airbnb place. It was incredibly nice, beautiful. Anyways, that was in a place called Stoke Newington. And Mark Boland grew up in a house like I said, two blocks away. I went to see it. There's a plaque on the wall of the house. Um, the house looks like it's gone to hell, but there's a nice memorial plaque on it. And I went and got my photo. Anyways, um, I didn't get a chance to go see the Mark, the Mark Bowen Memorial when I was there. I was, uh, we were just really busy. But anyways, I was lucky I found one copy in London of the silver vinyl exclusive 1000 uh, limited edition of the slider. That was a very big moment, more so because I finally found it totally by accident after looking for days and days and making phone calls. Okay, so the next two finds are, um, if I have memories of where I found them, I'll let you know. If I remember the price, I'll let you know. If not, I was at 22 record stores in Europe. I can't remember everything. Um, these two were from Camden uh, the second time around I was in London. And I got a copy. Uh, these were definitely five pounds a piece, this one and the next one. Uh, Queensryche overseeing the operation, 10 inch vinyl. This was a sampler released for the Operation Mind Crime, Al Mind Crime album. And the A side is Sweet Sister Mary, and the B side is five tracks off of Operation Mind Crime. Like I said, it was kind of like a, a sampler album to kind of get into that Operation Mind Crime album. I had been looking at that for a long time. So that was in Camden Town, five pounds. Um, very excited about that one. Uh, five pounds as well. Um, I've been looking for this album for a long time. I guess it's quite common in Europe. Not very common in Canada at all. It's Rush. Rush Through Time. Rush Through Time is a compilation album released in Europe, I believe, only. And it's kind of like a greatest hits, I guess, for a band who never had greatest hits. It's a best of collection from the first album to Moving Pictures. And there's a track listing if you're so inclined, or if you can read that. And it's cool because it's got Twilight Zone on it. Um, not a song that you normally see on Rush Best Of albums, but that was uh, Fiverr in Camden Town. And that's uh, an original Mercury Records pressing. Not that any, uh, just in case you care to see. And suffice to say, all these, all the records I'm going to show you in this series of uh, finds in Europe, I wouldn't have bought them if they were less than excellent quality vinyl. Um, sometimes the covers aren't the greatest. Oh well. Anyways, so that was uh, about 10 pounds total for, for those two, uh, the Queen's Reich and Rush. And that, those were definitely from Camden Town. So Rush, uh, Rush Through Time. Uh, the next two are upgrades. And uh, you might shake your head, but I like what I like. And I'm all over the map for what I like. You all know this. Um, but these, one of these albums is incredibly hard to find, and it goes for a lot of money in my parts. It's an upgrade of Duran Duran's Greatest Hits Decade. That was at a record stall. Uh, um, it was a, a stall in a, in a street market, uh, Brick Lane um, street market. And there was a guy there who had uh, bins and bins of records for um, three for 10, four for 10. 
Um, and you don't see this very often. And mine is, uh, it's been played. So and I've DJed with it. So uh, I found a beautiful upgrade copy and that was, I think, uh, I think it was three for 10. There you go. And Duran Duran's first album. Now, big deal, I know. Uh, this is an original UK first pressing. And what's different about this one is you never see this in my parts. Um, the original pressing in the UK came with a song called To The Shore. You might want to see that there. It's To The Shore is up there. To The Shore was subsequent, uh, subsequently uh, taken off later releases. Uh, it was subbed for, I believe in Canada, it was subbed for a longer dance version of uh, Girls on Film and Planet Earth, I believe. And then later on it was subbed for, um, is there something, um, is there something I should know? Uh, and then it had a different cover on it. But to find a true first pressing with uh, To The Shore, I, I've literally been looking for this uh, since about 85. Um, and it's one of those things, yes, I could have ordered off Discogs. Um, once again, a lot of these things, once you factor in shipping, it doesn't make it financially viable. But that was part of that three for 10. I can't remember what it was, three for 10, four for 10. But uh, anyways, a nice, uh, the silver foil. Uh, it's a true first pressing of Duran Duran's first album with To The Shore. So I think that's a set completer. I think I now have every single uh, version of their first album. This I got from my friend Tom. So Tom, if you're watching this, uh, I think you might know I'm gonna get you this one anyways. Uh, the Four Horsemen, nobody said it was easy. Uh, this was a um, uh, flashback in their basement. Uh, you saw that clip from flashback. Uh, they weren't too keen on me uh, filming in there. They were nice though. Uh, in their basement, which is stacks and stacks of dollar records, two, or uh, pound records, two pound records. And that was in there. And it originally sold for a dollar ninety-nine, a dollar ninety-nine, or a pound ninety-nine, whatever you call it. So, anyways, that's going to my good friend Tom. And I believe the odd thing is, the last time I was in England, three or four years ago, I got him um, the first Four Horsemen um, EP before they kind of made it big. So, Tom, you're getting another Four Horsemen. Next two are from Sister Ray. And when you go into Rough Trade and you go into Sister Ray, um, I always bypass the new vinyl. The new vinyl you can get in Europe, you can get here, you can get on Amazon. There's absolutely zero point in me shopping for brand new records. The T-Rex was an exception, obviously, because there was a limited colored vinyl. But, you know, the same new vinyl they had at Sister A, at Rough Trade, etc., etc., you can get here. And records, um, by and large, if they sell for 20 pounds there, they sell for, they sell for $20 here. But once you do the price conversion, I'm paying $35 Canadian. If you get my drift with the Oxar dollar is worth nothing compared to their dollar. Anyways, I go to the Sister A clearance section. And um, I guess this is a new vinyl too, so I lied. There's a, a, maybe a couple new records in here. This was um, £3.99. I hope I got that right. So a Spinal Tap, Break Like the Wind, Picture Disc. In Canada, this sells for 30 to 40 bucks. I think it's deleted now. This was in their clearance bin for about four pounds. Brand new. I love, this is an, uh, I remember uh, the original Rolling Stone magazine review for this said this was one of the best rock albums of that year. Um, if you had not known they were kind of a joke band. Um, Jeff Beck plays on this album. And I don't particularly find this album funny, like the, their first album. It's just really good musically. If you've not heard this album, listen to it. Um, it's an insanely credible hard rock album. Lots of good guest stars. Like I said, uh, I don't find it funny like the first one, but Break Like the Wind. That was from Sister Ray Clarence. This one, this was um, one pound. And this has been in my Discogs uh, watch list for a while. And I just never pulled the gun on it or pulled the trigger on it. Because, uh, like I said, at the aforementioned shipping costs and currency conversion and blah, blah, blah. Is, this is the promo advance album for the Cult Electric. And what this is, this is a Beggar's Banquet promo album that came out in advance of the Electric album coming out. It's a white label. And it's uh, Ian Asprey and Billy Duffy talking about the Electric album. A couple of videos ago, you might have seen um, an XTC one, um, very similar to this one. It's the band talking to someone about the song that's off the electric, and then they play a song. They cut back, they talk about the other song, and they, so forth. You know, you get the point. You get the point. 
anyways, uh, that was one pound. And I said, I've been watching this for a long time. So it's, uh, essentially it's a, uh, advanced promo for the cult electric, but with them talking about the songs in between the songs. If you get my drift, very excited about that. So that and the break, like the wind spinal tap was, uh, like five pounds total. So that was, um, that was pretty exciting. Next album, uh, like I said, you might look at me sideways for this. There was a period in the late 80s, early 90s, I was really all about the UK indie music. Um, Pop Will Eat Itself, Jesus Jones' first album. Uh, not their second album, their first album called Liquidizer. And a band called EMF. We all know EMF from that song, Unbelievable. Their first album, Schubert, Schubert Dip, you all know that album. I'm not a big fan of that album. Uh, their second album, Stigma is I wore that tape out walking to, uh, at the time that came out, I was going to college and I wore that tape out. I thought it was so good and uh, no one else really agreed with me here. It might've done well in UK, I don't know. It didn't do very well here, but I had a cassette copy of it and I wore that thing out. Once again, like a lot of these albums you're gonna hear me talk about, I've wanted it forever. It's one of those things I just, you'll never see. There it is. That was part of that, um, that Brick Lane record stall that was three or four for uh, for 10 pounds and there it was so that really broke down to about 250 approximately and I, I probably would have paid 20 30 bucks for this um like i said uh this just kick this is uh, of the three or four albums they did this is by far their best this kicks the holy shit out of that first album they did and their third album is a, a horrible mess of a joke called uh cha 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 this album though so EMF, um, one of those things, uh, like I was talking about in that intro to an intro or the second intro, uh, an awesome catalog filler, something I've been looking for forever. EMF stigma. If you're so inclined, if you like that, uh, UK, anything from that era, please give it a listen. There you go. This was okay. Uh, I'm going to continue on with that brick lane record stall cause I, um, I'm looking at this album here and it was four for 10. There you go. Um, another album I would never have normally picked up uh, cause you just don't see it here. And you're gonna look at me like I'm crazy, but how many times do you see, and, and watch you all say, well, I got a copy and I got a copy and uh, you're, gonna make, you're gonna make me look stupid more than I do normally. But Huey Lewis and the News, hard at play. I've never seen this on vinyl. In fact, there's the original Chrysalis sticker. Uh, this was released May 7th, 1991. I've never seen this on vinyl. This was the album, I believe, after Small World. Um, I don't think this ever came out on vinyl in North America. But this is actually a really, really good album. And my dog's here. Mika's here. All right, don't knock over my camera. There you go. <laughs> my dog's back from a walk. Anyways, um, hit me like a hammer. And the first single, I believe, was... Um, Couple Days Off. You might know that song, Couple Days Off. So that was the follow-up single to, uh, the follow-up album to Small World. There you go. Um, I got one more for you. And then I'm gonna tell you about my next video, because my next video is gonna be um, loaded. Trust me on this one. Although, I, everything I showed you, I loved. Golden Earring. Every video seems to have a golden earring. Mika, be a good girl. Daddy's filming. And you're gonna knock this table over. Golden Earring, Contraband. Um, there was a couple albums I went to Europe specifically looking for, and there's a couple Golden Earring albums I wanted, and I found them. The other ones you'll see in the next videos. This one was at Flashback. Um, this was four pounds. This and the other album that you're gonna see coming up in the next video is the two that I'm missing. And this was, um, yeah. Four pounds. And this, uh, if you know Golden Earring at all, if you have one of their greatest hits albums, it invariably has the song Mad Love's Coming. That's on this album, Contraband. So um, the two missing Golden Earring albums that I needed, I'm kind of giving it away for my next video for one of my finds. Um, the two albums I wanted, I found. And I didn't pay more, oh, well, we'll get to that next video. Contraband, anyways, this has Mad, Love, uh, Mad Love's Coming on it. And I was thrilled to find this. So this, if nothing else, this trip, I completed my golden earring collection. So there you go. Um, 
the next video you're going to see is going to be um, Berlin and Prague, I believe. And we still have Copenhagen, and Copenhagen is unbelievable. Um, so i got at least two more videos, unless I can cram everything into one video. There wasn't a lot of filming going on in Prague and Berlin. There was a little bit, but um, English, not so much. It was okay, but um, it seemed a little bit weird, um, me coming in and this bar being this language barrier and me whipping out a camera filming around. But there was some video shot, but uh, it'll be a shorter video anyways. But um, there's some great, great stuff coming up. I promise you that. Anyways, this was my first video of my European trip. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Please stay tuned and please watch the next one. You're going to see some incredible stuff. And, um, yeah, I'm probably going to get some sleep now. And uh, maybe question my dog why she uh, bombed through my video. Anyways, I, I haven't seen her in two and a half weeks. She probably misses the hell out of me. So we're going to wrap it up here. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you made it through this video. Like I said, please watch the uh, parts two and three or however many parts there are because there's going to be some good stuff coming up. David and Michael from the Vinyl community, it's good to be home and I'm glad to be back making videos. Thank you. We'll see you soon.